My next guest, he has 25 years of helping people navigate high conflict conversations. It's what he does every day and he does it well. After all that experience, he's calling out five essential relationship principles. He believes if you do these five things, you'll have a stronger, happier connections and communication. I'm with relationship contributor, Dr. Matt Townsend. Hello, Hi, Matt. Dalen. He's just bringing the fun today. To I'm giggling when the camera's coming on. <laughs> we're talking about Kanye's girlfriend. No, we're <laughs> no. talking today. You say that we have to remember the when the only person you have to take control over is you, and that sets yeah. us up today. See, when you get into a serious conversation, yeah. a lot of what we're trying to do is be heard mm -hmm. or get them to change. Right. And so the minute the minute you have so much energy around something, but I still think, and my all that energy is focused on someone else, I'm in trouble. Right. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure, first and foremost, that the only person you really are, have the power to control is yourself. Mm -hmm. In that conversation, you just control you. Control your thinking, control your reactions, control your um, intentions, control your response to them. Because if I'm trying, like, it, it's otherwise, I start to get upset by what you're doing. Right. And the minute I start getting upset by what you're doing, I take my eye off myself and I start just becoming more and more reactive, which actually robs me of all of my power in the conversation. Okay, so this is essential, but now tell us how to do it. Okay. The irony of it is. It, first foremost thing we all have to know to do is that you have the power to do it. Right. We all have the power to not take the offense. We mm. all have the power to actually be in charge of this conversation and to not react. So one thing I would do is before you go into a big conversation, think it out, plan it out, talk mm -hmm. it out, think about what you have done before and how it's gone so you've got a plan so that you're actually going in there having thought through it and you kind of created it mentally before you go create it emotionally and verbally. So you don't word vomit. You don't all word over, vomit. So you don't word vomit yeah. all which over is, the which person. Is, which again, what's powerful about the word right. vomit is if you're not in control of your mouth, you're not in control of anything. Right. So all this talking is not going to help because down the, in the future, you won't be able to do it anyway because you mm -hmm. don't have that self-control. Which kind of leads to your next point because you're saying we shouldn't, we should we should talk, but we yeah. can't shy away from these conversations. No. It's important not no, to. No, you've got to talk. So, And by the way, one of the reasons that you should is because... Um, it's about competence, right? Mm -hmm. So lasting confidence with people comes from real competence. Okay. Not just peaceful interaction. Right. A lot of people think that they're going to get through life just making peace. Mm -hmm. Just smiling and taking it. Just right. smiling and never progressing. Right. But that won't get you confidence. Mm -hmm. If you really want confidence with people in relationships, you're going to have to step into the hard talk and you're going to have to get good at it. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to read some books. You're going to have to take a class. You're going to have to practice it and do it. And then what's weird is you get your confidence. Confidence. There's a quote by Victor Hugo that says, we need to be like the bird who's about to land on a limb that can't hold it, but the bird sings because the bird has wings. Mm. When the bird lands on a limb that is going to break, mm -hmm. it's okay because yeah. it knows it can fly. We should be able to go into conversations that are difficult and feel okay about it because we're competent enough to have the conversation. Oof, I love that. And also confidence, I was thinking substance too. Yeah. Because uh -huh. it gives that depth, Absolutely. which isn't surface level anymore. That's exactly right. Now you're going deeper. And by the way, when you go deeper, it, we, it, we're so afraid to go deeper, mm -hmm. but the, the better and the faster you go deeper, the faster the conversation ends. Mm. It's when you stay in the shallows and keep splashing right. that you keep attracting the sharks. It's, but when you go in deep and you're handling yeah. stuff and taking care of stuff, it's weird because we don't want to go deep because we're afraid of it. But the deeper you go and the faster you can go deep, you realize this isn't something to be afraid of. We're all just human down in the deep. Mm, all just human. Next, you say the less you say, the more your words were, will yeah. matter. So everybody out there should be thinking, do I, in high conflict, do I end up talking a lot? Because if you're talking a lot, you're actually having less and less impact. Mm -hmm. The person that usually has the most power in the, in the negotiation is the one that doesn't say the, the, the most. They're the one that just listens. Because they're gathering information, they're gathering a plan, they're gathering, they're being proactive, mm -hmm. they're not reacting. So if you want power in a conversation, yeah. less is more, and it actually elevates the power of what you say because you're saying the right thing in the right way at the right time. Mm. Next, you say you don't want us to take offense. Yeah, especially when someone's, I call it, hijacked. 
If someone's in fight or flight mode, you need not be offended. Mm -hmm. By the way, if someone's drunk, you also need not be offended by what they're saying. They're in fight or flight mode. We call this empowered communicator. You have the power to not take offense. When your child tells you you're the worst mother in the world, <laughs> You need not be offended if right. it's nap time right. and they don't want to go to bed. And by the way, we all know that with the little child. But it's the same thing when we're talking to our husband or our mm -hmm. spouse and they say something that is absolutely so rude. But if they're saying it when right. they're hijacked and upset and mm -hmm. angry, mm -hmm. it doesn't actually mean they mean it more. Right. It means that they're not being heard. Mm -hmm. So they elevate the toxicity of it, which is why you're so offended by it. Mm -hmm. What happens when they say it and you don't take offense and you actually lean in a little bit more and say, are you OK? Talk yeah. to me about what's going on, because yeah. I can see you're really upset. Let's get real. That's a different level of power than, because if not, then I have to deal with not only his messed up nature, then you're offended, now you're messed up, and we're just con in contagion, right? Mm -hmm. We're just contagiously infecting each other with emotion. You're coming emotion. at it from a place of love, which is mm -hmm. what you would do with your child, yeah, right? Always, when yeah. they're upset, you're getting down on their level, right. they're talking to them, it's and the same with your And you're understanding them, and you know you have a role. It's not what they say that's the key, mm -hmm. it's how you interpret it. Mm -hmm. you, oh, there's way more power in the interpreter than in the speaker. We just always pay everybody in this world to speak. Mm -hmm. We don't pay very many people to listen. Yeah. Right? But the funny thing about my career is my whole career is listening. Yeah. And the more you listen, it's weird. People want to hear more what you say. Mm. It's just a weird It's just weird. Dichotomy, it's just weird. Right? Yeah. Okay, 60 seconds left. Yeah. You're saying there are no coincidences. There are no coincidences. So every conversation that you have with another person means that they are either there to change your life or you're there to change theirs. Yeah. You're walking in on a really special moment with another being, and somebody is going to be influenced. It's just going to be who. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're willing to be, it'd be neat if you could also be influenced, mm -hmm. especially before you try to influence. Yeah. And once you do that, you weirdly take all the pressure out of the conversation, and you start to see them as a thou, mm -hmm. a big, important person we respect, instead of an it, something we just take care of and fix and manage. I it's love power. that. Such good points. Thank you so much, Matt. Really quickly, tell us about your Becoming One program. Becoming One, all you got to do is go to matttownsend.com. It's, it's a monthly subscription where you get access to a ton of our content, weekly calls with me, and then we have coaches that are available to answer your questions as, as a, just in your marriage, and your life, or we'll also uh, take your calls in live calls every week. It's mm -hmm. awesome. It's group coaching. We're building a community of people that are trying to become one with each other. We all want a community. That it's sounds awesome. so great. Thanks so much, yeah. Matt. Thanks, Dayla.